Welcome to WD02. We're going to work on making a resume and this just has a, a sample name in here but we're going to mainly work on the formatting of this and I'm showing you the PDF version, the PDF sample that you'll be able to look at. Now I did save it down as a PDF without text so you can't copy and paste it. I will give you a file with the text that you're going to format but this is really just to look at the formatting of it. A couple things I'll just point out on the sample on the top part here, there's the return address, which is going to be right aligned to smaller size. We have the name of the person, which is just made larger, and it also has a space before, and it has a rule underneath, which we'll, we'll do that with border in Word. Uh, all these sections here have space before, so we're not going to use double returns. We're going to use space before to create that distance between each section. A couple little things here, there's, there's a, a tab, a left tab that's set up along here where all these items are aligned with. There's also a right tab on this one item here that has dates. And there's also a bulleted list that we're going to actually make a bulleted list with a hanging indent. And at the bottom of this thing, there's also another hanging indent where it tabs over and then it'll indent underneath where that tab is. So we'll be doing a couple of these things during working on this resume, but you can look at this first and print it out just to make sure this is what it's going to look like. There's about an inch and a quarter margin on either side and an inch on the top and bottom, kind of like the business letter we did first. And you're going to open up this in Word unformatted. So let me go open this up. And I'm assuming here that you have already downloaded it. And what you're going to open up is the file that says WD02 resume last name. And I'm going to double click and open that in Word. You might have to go to Word and open that and do a file open if you're having any issues with it opening up in Word. But I'm going to open up the file. Here's the file opened up. And you can see it's unformatted. And the margin should be set up the way you want. So you don't have to do anything with the margins. Okay, so step one was just download the file and save it with your last name. And I'll do that quick just to follow the instructions. I'll do, you might as well save it right away. And I'll save it by replacing where it says last name F with my last name. So I'll do that and save it. And it doesn't matter if you save it down as an older doc or doc X. I don't care. Um, the next step says turn on your show hide. This is the show hide button here, number two. That is on when I open it up. When it's yellow, it's on. Now it's off. So I want to turn it on. And you should be seeing all these returns and little dots and things. Those are your show hide. Because I want to make sure that you're not using double returns like we did on the business letter. We're actually going to use something different. Also, number three on here get kind of gets gets us started. So I'm going to highlight here the first three lines. And I'm just going to align them right. You could use the icon up here to just align to the right side. It will align to the right margin. And then change the font size to 11. Now the, the font I gave you was Times New Roman 12, so um, as long as everything's 12, you should be fine. I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller, and that's number three. Number four on your list is this top line part, and going back here, this is the part that's going to look like this Benjamin Akimoto part, and you could throw in any name that you want, or you could leave it the way it is. But for this part, and now another thing too, when you highlight, this is a paragraph. This line here is a paragraph. It may look like a line to you. But whenever there's a return, that's why I wanted your show hide on, it means it's a paragraph. So I'm going to highlight this paragraph by going off to the left side. You don't have to go in here or you don't have to drag it and highlight like this. You can just go off to the left with your arrow click and it'll highlight the whole paragraph. Now what I'm going to do with this paragraph, and the reason I say paragraph is because there's going to be settings for this particular paragraph even though it's one line. Now one of the things you're going to do here is make this larger and bolder. So I'm going to make it 24 point. I'll make it bold italic. And then I'm also going to give it a space before setting of 24 point. Now this is where you go to the paragraph dialog box. This is the paragraph dialog box launcher. It'll basically open up the paragraph formatting settings. Now there's a, there's a bunch here, but this will open up even and this is similar to older versions of Word where it'll have this and if you work on a Mac if you go to paragraph formats or format paragraph it'll open this up as well and it should look the same on the newest version alright so what I'm gonna do here is go into where it says spacing and just give it a 24 it'll go in six point increments give it a 24 point space before setting and you can see what that did I didn't hit return twice I just gave it a space before setting and then 
Another thing I'm going to do is on number five, I'm going to give it a bottom border. Now where you can go to do this, if you go to your home tab and you go over here, this little thing here is borders. Now there's all kinds of little borders here you can use and you could just use, use a bottom border if you want, but I'd recommend that you actually go down to the very last option here, which is, which is borders and shading. And if you're on a Mac, make sure you go to format borders and shading. And that's what I'm going to click on and it'll open up this dialog box and just make sure that it's not a page border. Make sure that it just says border. And over here in this area, you're just going to click bottom border and you can see a little, a, you know, a little preview of what it's going to look like. So that's the bottom border and this is half point or 0.5 point. You can make it thicker if you want. And notice that it says apply to paragraph. We have one paragraph highlighted and it's going to apply that bottom border to the paragraph. And there's other options that are here if you go under options, but for right now, just make sure you click the bottom border and make sure it's under border and hit OK. And that's it. Now it's real close to this next line. If you look at your PDF, you can see we have space there and we're going to do space before each one of these settings. So for, for number six, uh, well actually number six we're going to set a tab, but then we'll, we'll also do the spacing on number seven. So we'll do both of that. Let me go back to my Word document. I'm going to highlight from education on down to the end of the document and there's not a whole lot here. So I'm going to highlight from education on down and I'm going to set a tab. So this is number six and we're going to set a 1.75 tab. Now you can do it on your ruler pretty easily by hitting le you know, making sure you have a left tab and clicking right here. But I'll, I want to make sure you know how to do it through the dialog box as well. So I'm going to go into paragraph. I'm going to open this up and go down in the bottom and go to tabs. Okay, and this is where I'm going to set my tab to all that highlighted text. And I'm just going to type in 1.75. And then it's a left tab. And no leaders. We're not working with leaders yet. And I'm just going to hit set. And then OK. Now what you'll see is some of this text will push the tab over. There's the tab that just got created. Now, I already have some tab characters in here. And when there is a tab character, they'll get lined up with the tab that I set. Some of them won't that we'll actually have to put in actual tabs to tab things over, to move them over to where the tab is set. So this is the tab stop that we set at 1.75. Okay, and that's all we need to do for that step on number six. Number seven is we're going to do the space before and we're going to start just spacing out the rest of the document, all these different sections here. So again, on the PDF, education, experience, awards, activities, all these different sections, we're going to do a space before. You're not going to do double returns. So what I'm going to do is just click my cursor. Now for a paragraph, all I have to do is click my cursor in here just one time because I'm not changing any fonts or anything. I'm just going to click my cursor in here and I'm going to go open this up again and I'm going to go to where it says spacing and I'm just going to click up to 24 and hit OK. Now this will be repetitive right now, but eventually we'll learn how to do styles to make this faster. So I go to experience and I do the same thing. So this is just repeating each one make it 24 point space before. Click in the paragraph, go to your paragraph dialog box, change spacing to 24 and hit OK. And even, even doing it repetitively doesn't take that long. You can see I could do it fairly quickly now. And there's one last section, volunteer work at the end. And I'll make sure that's 24 point. And now we're, we're almost there. We have things lined up. We have some other things we're going to have to bump over. We're going to have to push some tabs over. So I'm going to do number eight and then I'll, I'll do a break here and then I'll do a, the rest of it at part two. So I'm going to click here. Some of these things I'm just going to tab over because you can see computer science and AA, they don't line up and they should line up here. And the way we can move them over, don't space them or anything. Now we set a tab. So when we hit just tab once, it should bump over to where we set the tab. That's why we set the tab for everything. Skip this section for now. And then even the intern part, just skip that for now. And then computer science awards, you're going to tab over these three things down here, big brothers, computer club and new England. We're just putting your cursor in there and hitting tab. So you're inserting, there it is. You're inserting a tab character that goes over to where it's set at 1.75 down here. You're not going to do anything. We're going to actually set a hanging indent so that the wrapping text lines up with this line here. You don't want to do this. You don't want to be tabbing over here and trying to make things line up. I'm just going to control Z that. That's not the way we 
make text align underneath there, we're going to use a hanging indent. So we'll do that in one of our, our later steps in here. So that's that's number eight. So I'm going to actually stop here. And then for the second part of this, I'll just finish up uh, steps nine through 14.